first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, I see some faces from my childhood. It's like a flashback. We're talking about going, going back to uh, when we lived on 1228 East 54th Street. So I've seen um, people who have um, known me before I knew myself. Um, the sele first selection we played was Wade in the Water, and that uh, my father recorded two volumes of sacred music. Um, and um, I was, we were able to do duets on both volume one and volume two. The Wade in the Water arrangement was my father's, um, that's on volume two. Um, so the majority of this music you're gonna be hearing today are my father's arrangements, and you can also um, hear them in the original format by the master, Willie Pickens. Um, uh, if you take something home with you today, and I'll gladly sign it, of course, a portion of the proceeds are gonna go to our church. Um, uh, they got me with the celebration. I tried to just ease out on the res retirement tip. You know, I was just trying to just, you know, dip out the back door and not make too much of a fuss. But um, almost a year later, when I, re I graduated, I retired <laughs> November 2023, November 3rd. So um, after 28 years, And my last 10 years, I was fortunate to teach, teach at both my alma mater, 16 years at Great Elementary School, and, um, and then 10 years at Kenwood Academy. So um, it was a blessing to uh, be a part of many children's lives. Um, I really loved working with them and continue to work with the young minds because uh, they're, they keep the 100 and uh, they're authentic they, before they get uh, tainted or uh, distracted, maybe. Um, next selection is also on my father's volume. I don't remember the volumes, which one is this on. This is his arrangement of Blessed Assurance.
Mom, music is life. These are the words of my then 10-year-old child, daughter Vanessa, who was immersed in music, from gospel music, her dad being an organist, minister of music, her mom being choir director, her brother a percussionist, she herself in the youth choir, but also in the music program at school, learning to read music, learning to play the clarinet, a beautiful voice, a dancer, and unbeknownst to me, for a while teaching herself to play piano. This 10-year-old, seemingly out of nowhere, exclaims to me one day after school, Mom, music is life. Seemingly out of nowhere, this came, but I have no doubt that it followed a school experience in concert band when she and other fifth and sixth grade children were making music and even at 10 she was blown away by what they as children were able to do. In our gospel scripture today Jesus and his disciples are out and about and in the region of Judea having just left Galilee and everywhere they went large crowds followed them. They knew that this man named Jesus was in town and that he was healing disease, feeding multitudes, and teaching profound and liberating truths. And surely among the crowd were children. Matthew 19, 13 reads that children were being brought to Jesus in order that he may lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought the children. Ah, those disciples. Meaning well, but still impacted by the culture of the society in which they lived, which placed children at the bottom of society's hierarchy with no social status. Verse 14 reads, but Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. It is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. This was not the first time that Jesus lifted children as a model for his followers. Matthew 18, just one chapter earlier, reads verse 1, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And what is it about children that one would forbid them? What is it about children that one would avoid them, that society would not lift them, but that Jesus said we needed to be like them? Well, first of all, children are honest. Honesty can be a little rare these days. Children, I have an amen somewhere can be the most honest among us. Gee, children are bold. Children can be unpredictable, so unpredictable, Bethany, that it can kind of be like jazz to instruct them. You've got to be able to improvise. And while teaching a mass, a classroom full of children, you may have to give attention to a few children who might be focused on other things. As different gifts emerge, you highlight it like a jazz solo. Your children may go solo on their own. And as, a, as an instructor, you might have to allow them to be solo for a minute and then bring them on back in with everybody else so that no one is left out. No wonder a great jazz musician is also a great teacher among young people. It takes jazz. Children will indeed challenge the status quo, won't they? 
Jesus said, be like children, and then gave a blessing to those who welcome children. And I believe that in order to teach children, you first have to welcome children. Today we celebrate one who welcomes children. Thank you, Bethany, for 28 years of welcoming children within the Chicago public school system. Thank you for your patience and your kindness and your standards of excellence, for your belief in children, and most of all, for playing jazz with children, for being able to improvise and make beautiful, exciting, amazing musical creations with children. Thank you for knowing within yourself that music is life and that children can make beautiful artistic music if they were given the resources and the attention and the encouragement and the guidance. Thank you for knowing that our children can produce music if just given a chance. For indeed, music is life, music heals. I have a friend, most of our congregation knows, Clara Takarabe, she's a neuroscientist with Northwestern music and medicine, music heals. Thank you for knowing that our children can produce music that indeed heals. Music, as we heard in our scripture today, praise is praise. And the psalmist says, let everything that has breath, that includes everyone that has breath, praise the Lord. Children who indeed have breath are included in making music to God. So we bless music teachers today. If you had a wonderful music teacher, mine's name was Mr. Clifton, District 89, Maywood, Illinois. Amazing teacher. If anybody else has amazing music teacher in their life, won't you raise your hand? And now let's give God praise for the amazing music teachers in our story. If you ever, and I'm almost done, if you ever feel you're losing hope in today's children, take yourself to a youth arts program, a youth band. Find an opportunity to go to a marching band competition. My children were part of the marching band, both of them of Marion Catholic High School. So their high school years was me sitting in the stands, usually freezing, at marching band competitions for at least six years, son and daughter, back to back. Visit a youth dance program and watch children show up in their brilliance. And you'll begin to realize that the only difference between these children and those who may be in trouble is these children had exposure to the arts and adult teachers who welcomed them before they tried to teach them. Youth dancers are youth dancers because they had adult dance teachers. Youth musicians are youth musicians because they had music teachers, adults who know deep down that giving children access to the arts is giving them access to the brilliance that's already inside of them. The music they will create will simply be a manifestation of the harmony and joy and ability that's within them. Indeed, music is life and zip code shouldn't matter. Amen. If you don't know what that meant, see me after worship or see the sister who clapped, amen. Zip code, the way that our state still divides funds to schools by zip code, zip code should not matter. Music education should be in every school all over this country. Don't block children like the disciples were trying to block children from life because of where they live. Offer that which we know gives life to children. Nourish their brains and gives them hope. Give children music and forbid them not, for music is life. So today, Bethany, we honor and celebrate you for educating surely thousands of children in Chicago public schools in music, and no doubt also in life. 
giving them access to that which was already within them. Bethany, we celebrate you for carrying on a legacy of your amazing parents, Irma and Willie Pickens. Bethany, we honor you for giving children music and in essence for giving children life. And with all I've said, here are two young people who can say it and demonstrate it much better than I. I introduce you to Trinity Bryant and Sean Bryant, Jr. with their tribute to you, Bethany. <laughs> 